guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here. Hopefully, it finds you all doing well. We're going to talk about one of my favorite champions in the game. Uh, incredibly, it's hard to even say underrated, but I'm going to say underrated in Molly Tankard, especially outside the arena. Obviously, we're going to spotlight her in the arena where she's most known for, but I feel like people sleep on this champion really anywhere in the game. She's one of the most special, unique, and incredible champions inside the entire game. And today, my goal is going to be to make the world's strongest Molly Tankard and push her to her limit and see what she can do. So uh, the guard, we never talk much about the token trader, right? Token trader, they need to have a refresh button, no? That's a terrible idea. I would love, even if it costs, you know, whatever. I don't know what the gem cost would be. I don't even want to say anything. That's not terrible. If there was even a gem refresh button, I would do it because you know what? I think that for 99% of players out there, I mean, you should focus, everybody should focus on your faction guardians first, right? And then you you think about empowerment and really it's after that it's a crappy champions that you would never want to empower but you always run the risk that plarium is going to come in and buff underwhelming legendaries i never promised they've done it so many times before uh mashal dracomorph comes to mind but champions that used to be meh but now are some of the best in the game so do you ever want to have your hands on one of those champions and then you throw them away for you know life tokens or whatever uh that's what they're called right life tokens <laughs> Life tokens, yeah. And then you want to throw them away for life tokens? I don't know, man. I, that, that's that's it, it. It's difficult to do. However, with all that said, I do have three thousand, which allows me to buy Molly Tankard. Welcome to the squad. So what we're gonna do? It's gonna rebuild Molly Tankard again. We're trying not just for regular Molly. We're trying for the game's best Molly Tankard, right? So let's go right back to the Guardian Ring and let's empower her. Let's em actually let's take a look at her stats first right now. Take a look at her kit, her stats, what she does, and then we'll get to the empowering and, uh, you know, see what kind of uh, surprises she has in store for us. So, where are you? I know I mentioned this like a hundred times, apropos of absolutely nothing, but Nekmo Thar, dude, is cr quickly creeping up my list of just most insane legendaries in the game. I love that champion. We're here to talk about Molly Ash. Look at those base stats, guys. 107 speed, 1465 defense, 18495 on the HP. Not bad, but especially love to see that speed at 107. That defense being that high is fantastic. You'll also notice her base resist is 80. Most champions quite a bit lower. Dwarves tend to have a higher base resist than other champions, which is great as well, right? Uh, so her kit, honor a one roast, HP burn. Okay, uh, excuse me, damage increases if they're under HP burn. Uh, on the A2, so nothing to write home about there. Although, decent multipliers, it is based on defense, obviously, for a defense-based champion. Uh, but we're really not building her or concerned with damage from Molly Tankard. She is the, the queen of control in Raid Shadow Legends. She has a Provoke on a three-turn cooldown that has a 50-50 shot of lasting for two turns. That's a two-turn Provoke on a three-turn cooldown. Also, reflect damage on herself for two turns. And then Cheers, she also also has a revival in her kit. Revives an ally, 50% HP, 50% turn meter, block damage on that ally for one turn on a four turn cooldown. Uh, it's not a bad revival, it's not one of the game's best revivals, but 50% block damage and 50% turn meter on a four turn is not too bad. It's a good revival to have in a kit like this. And then Rowdy Crowd is really what makes this champion special. And that is, fills the turn meter of all allies by 15% when this champion is hit. 25% uh, when hit by a boss. So obviously we can use this in the arena, notably against Hegemon, he's always going to go first. So right out the gate, she's going to be getting hit and, you know, provided, uh, provided, well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> provided she's getting hit, which is going to be the case. Everybody's going to get that turn meter boost by 15% before anything even happens, which is beautiful. Uh, so, uh, Masteries, we're going to redo all this stuff. We're going to redo, but let's take a look at the stats that I have her in right now. So 243, 372. Frankly, I haven't used her in a long time. She's just kind of sitting there with hand-me-down gear right now in an immunity set. We're going to take immunity off of uh, Molly Tankard. I would go untouchable immunity normally, but I'm going to try a strategy where I pair her with Necrit the Great to place that ally protect, and for that reason, we're going to have the lowest HP on Molly out of our entire team, which shouldn't be difficult because we're going to have Rodos, who scales damage scales off of HP and attack uh, as well on the squad. So he'll be our nuker, essentially. So it's going to be hopefully pretty easy to keep Molly below that threshold 
threshold of HP. So let's go ahead and empower, guys. And again, what I want to do is fully empower and just take a look at the stats and see how much it goes up. How much does it matter to fully empower a champion? So here we go. Did you have you guys ever bought anybody from the token trader? Like I was saying earlier, a refresh button. No, no, you're still holding on. Let go. Just to cycle to, you know, Duchess, right? I mean, just to cycle to Duchess, it might make sense if there was a champion that good available. I don't think any of these, I mean, Molly, Molly, I mean, call me crazy. I think I'd rather have Molly than Sir Nick, straight up, even Void versus, uh, what, versus Spirit. Anyway, shut up, Ash. Let's get to the point here, man. Come on, dude. All right, so my Faction Guardians, as you guys can see, is already full without any Molly tank guards, right? There's a uh, one, two, four, there's six Mountain Kings in here, but I'm unable to empower Mountain King because, well, I need them all for Faction Guardians. Uh, so instead, we are going to empower, I have the choice, fully empower Mountain King or fully empower Molly tank guard. We're gonna go with Molly tank guard here, and she, here she is, all five of her. I was thinking about, by the way, making a video where I maxed out every single Mountain King and put them all together and just see what they do. I don't know if that'd be fun or not. Let me know in the comments below. So first batch of stats, we get 10 HP, 10 attack, 10 defense, resist, and accuracy. The second one, we're gonna get 25 resist, 25 accuracy, 10 speed, 20 defense, 20 HP, 20 attack. The third one is gonna be 30, 30, 30, 10, 45, 45. And the fourth one is gonna be 10 crit rate, 30 crit damage, 55 resist, 55 accuracy, 40% defense, 40% attack, and HP, 15 speed. Good God. That is a, uh, that's insane in terms of the amount of stats. Hold up. I found myself a chair. Okay. But hey, we're trying to make the world's best here, guys. The world's strongest, you know? Uh, okay, so there she is, fully empowered, pretty cool, pretty pay to win. Uh, her stats now go up tremendously. I mean, look at this. Now she's at 52K, almost 10K HP. She gets almost 600 extra defense, putting her over 5,000, 15 extra speed. Well, you guys already saw all the stats, but boy, does that add up. Even the 55 extra accuracy, very important for this champion where accuracy is going to be our main concern in terms of the stat along with speed, I would say. So what I want to do, guys, is take her out of the immunity. I want to put her into perception. All right, guys, so we have rebuilt Molly Tankard, and I'm very, very happy with this build. As we mentioned, a triple perception set. Let me run you through all the artifacts really quickly. We were able to get a trip roll defense on a defense ring. We have a defense with a trip roll of accuracy on the amulet. So insane gear. Obviously, accuracy on the banner as well. Accuracy on the chest. Prioritizing accuracy. This is kind of an arena build. Uh, however, you can use this build anywhere, right? We just don't have War Master. We have Eagle Eye as our tier six mastery which i'll show you in just a moment we have defense percentage on the gauntlets there uh, i do have a couple unglyphed speed uh substats here so we can add probably two or three or ten maybe speed depending on how lucky we get on those glyphs but again i'm looking for speed and accuracy you'll see it on every single artifact uh so a double speed roll and a single accuracy or two of one and the other is kind of what i've been looking for here i didn't obviously accuracy on the main stat on the chest and again speed with a double Double accuracy on the boots. Uh, Masteries I also redid. We went down and grabbed Eagle Eye. Of course, there's no reason to have Master Hexer and Molly Tankard, but there's also no reason to have Snipers. So there's really, you know, we need to get to Eagle Eye essentially for the extra accuracy. So we don't have any reason for that mastery, but I think it's worth it to get Eagle Eye. Uh, my my other build would probably be, unless you wanted to build her super, super tanky uh, with maybe a Bulwark uh, Mastery, uh, I would just probably go with the extra damage and go with uh, War Master. Uh, if you're mainly just using her for PvE and you don't need the accuracy to be as high as we're showcasing here. However, if you have Molly, you might as well be using her in the arena as well, right? Uh, that's how I built her. That's how I would use her, even if I was going to use her in other areas of the game. So, sorry, itchy nose. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. here we go, guys. Total stats. 45k on the HP. Just shy of 5,000 on the, the defense, which is really, really nice considering that we have an accuracy chest on her, not defense, right? Uh, 302, very, very fast. 
and 748 on the accuracy. So we, you know, I mean, she's insane. She's insane uh, considering how much accuracy we have on her and still getting away with 342 resist, which against, you know, some, you know, like arbiters out there, we'll get a lot of resist on that A2. So uh, Molly Tankard is a beast of a champion. So let's go ahead and start out in the arena, guys, and then we'll move around a little bit. Uh, I am in gold five right now. Let me refresh, get a, a fresh cycle here. I'm going to go against the hard hardest teams I can possibly find. So let's start with against this Hegemon team. Gala Longbraids, do not sleep on Gala Longbraids, dude. She is, do not underestimate her. But the beauty of a Hegemon team is we're going to instantly activate that, uh, that, that rowdy crowd uh, passive, right? So here we go. And we have her protected. I would have her in immunity, but she's protected by Necrot the Great with block debuffs. So that was the Hegemon. Everybody gets sp sped up on my team. We get in front, we cut in line because of that speed boost uh, in front of their Siffy. We're going to provoke, we land a two-turn provoke on Astralon, their nuker, which is fantastic. And then we can buff everybody up. When Necret gets a turn, we're going to go right to Ally Protect on uh, Rodos, to try to keep him alive. He's going to be cleansed by Siffy. And we come in here and boom, take out Siffy. All right. And then we can take out, well, it's a, it's a shame. Sorry, Gala, we never even saw you do anything. You didn't even give me a chance. That's not fair. Bye-bye. <laughs> Rodos, by the way, guys, a few questions. I'm going to have an updated build on Rodos. I don't think I've ever even put out a video on him because I got him kind of late, like way after he was released to the game. Uh, so I one thing I'll tell you about Rodos, if you're lucky enough to have him, and you probably already know this if you do, but his damage scales quite a bit based on HP. Like it, it, you can tell just by looking at the stats. Uh, but if you take away some attack and replace it with more HP, for example, I went HP percentage on the chest, which makes no sense intuitively because his base HP doesn't scale well at like 11K. But I switched from attack to HP and he's just hitting harder. He's hitting about five to 10K harder. I did a damage test on PVE and the arena against the same, you know, uh, uh, champion. So just food for thought for you guys. Let's go against, uh, I mean, a lot of these teams are beasts, obviously. So I just want to take the strongest one that I can basically find here. So this one's going to be super annoying. We have two revivers, which is really, really great. Uh, they have Candy, who's a force affinity nuker. It's going to hurt us. We have a vulnerable Rodos on the squad. We get in there, though, again, with the uh, provoke. So he, they're not going to get their buffs from Duchess, which is exactly what we want, right? And then let's go... We go right with the A3 on Necret because we don't want to actually use his uh, killer. Boom. There we go. There we go, Rodos. Boom. Kill her. And then it's already game over, right? This is my show. We go with the A3 as a first move instead of the A2 getting the extra turn. We don't want an extra turn on Necret on this uh, this team or on this build, I should say, because he has a two-turn stone skin. We don't want to get that off of him, right? Uh, but Molly, I mean, just taking away, you saw it there, Duchess out the gate that's it it's game over right all we need is a turn or two and that's the power of her as a cc champion and we saw earlier i probably didn't make enough big deal about it but having her with the against hegemon teams like that where you're going to get that turn meter boost right out the gate so powerful right so this team made it look really easy granted i have like the most pay to win team as well so i'm not trying to say that anything special here let's go against trunda team cardial trunda seeker so very fast team uh, you're assuming with Cardial in the lead and with a speed booster and Seeker. Very interesting comp here. Let's go ahead and see how we do against them. Again, we're going to protect starting out. Going to come in here and look at that. Two turn provoke, two turn provoke. One turn, one turn. It's already game over. Go in here, block debuffs, and then take out. I mean, it, you can't touch us now. She's so tanky too. Forget 5,000 defense is solid you know it's not like the highest you'll ever see or anything like that but it's solid and cardio can't even come in and cleanse or anything like that that provokes away right um so now we can just kind of mess around here uh hit seeker let's find one more tough team guys and see how we do before we head to other areas of the game. Molly Tankard is, I think the biggest mistake people make is thinking that she's one dimensional for the arena. Whereas, man, she's beast. She's a beast, all around champion. Two turn provoke again. It's on a three turn cooldown, that two turn provoke, which is pretty incredible. Let's go ahead and refresh one more time. Find the most difficult team that we can face here. Uh, probably, probably, 
I don't know. What do you guys think? This one's a kind of a tough one. There's a few teams that are in contention. I think it's probably this team here. The Lady Kimmy, Kandrafon, Ragash team. Let's see how we do. And who's going to go first? They do. So we go second here. And nobody dies from Candy. We can go right into Arbiter here. Take her out. Take another turn and, I guess, poke at Lady Kimmy a little bit. And buff everybody up. Go ahead and protect uh, Rodos again. And look at this. She got hit. She got hit. Turn meter fills. We can revive her. No big deal. Come right back in. Let's kill Lady Kimmy. Sorry, Lady Kimmy. We love you. But you're dead. And now let's uh, provoke these two. Two turn on Ragash. See you later. You've been neutralized. Poke away at uh, Candyman. And there you go, guys. So, yeah, this is uh, obviously a beast team. You know, I'm tempted to try, like, a different team out, but I also don't want to make this video, like, two hours long. Hmm. Baby, please, I think let's cover some other PvE areas. That was the whole intent behind the video as well. Obviously, you can run her in all kinds of arena teams. That's the beauty as well. You can go on a go second team, uh, like this one, or a go first team. This one's kind of a hybrid, right? They're obviously fast, uh, or at least, uh, at least Molly is. Uh, but you guys get the point. She's incredible for the arena. One of the best control champions out there. Let's go to Doom Tower hard, and let's use her as our provoker against the Magma Dragon here, guys. This is floor 100 of Doom Tower hard we have husk in there as our provoker on this team uh let's go with molly again a good affinity matchup against the force affinity magma dragon let's see how she does here guys i think that magma dragon is the obvious choice for her in terms of where she's best going to show we can put it on auto here i think uh and starting out just by immediately CCing everybody. Uh, but really, you can run her in Frost Spider. You can run her in Eternal Dragon, Celestial Griffin. I would say those are her best areas. All of the dungeons, Spider, Dragon, Ice Golem, Fire Knight, even, even though she has a single hitter on her A1, still really useful as a, as a CC champion anywhere, right? Uh, so Septimus getting his, uh, getting his kills here early on. We're already back to another Provoke, which is nice to have. Septimus is cool when he goes in with the uh, the kill streak, right? One, two. Ah, oh, come on, man. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see how this team does. Hopefully, Molly can keep everybody alive. Even if she doesn't, it's nice to have a champion who has a uh, has a revive inner kit on the team, right? We didn't previously have that, so we don't have. We're still one turn away from our provoke, so we timed that incorrectly, which really sucks. Uh, and we don't have the provoke up from Martyr either, which is. Worst case scenario, but it's okay. A little bit late. Let's go ahead and get to the Angel Song ability, Revive on Death, that can't be removed. Uh, let's go ahead and just come in with the Holy Sword ability. Granted, uh, no debuffs on the target. Now we have decreased defense. There we go. Now we're going to be able to provoke the dragon. And she's so fast, too. Every time she gets hit, keep in mind, it's 25% turn meter, guys. 25% against bosses, right? So we don't, we're not going to use a Provoke on Martyr here because we want her to get targeted so we can get 25% boost on everybody else, right? So watch this. When the dragon actually gets a turn here, we're going to see something really cool. All right. It's just A1. A1. And here we go. Ah, that hurt. Hits Molly. 25% turn meter boost on everybody. That's insane. Every hit. That is just insane. All right, let's come back. We're, we're, we're one turn. I think we're going to get another turn in here because we're so freaking fast. Uh, just to play it safe, I'll put a provoke on the dragon just in case. But we're going to override that with Molly if she gets a turn before the dragon does. Let's see. And she does. So we're going to put a two turn provoke on the dragon. 25% turn meter boost. Insane. Insane. Uh, come back in here again with counterattack. And Septimus should be... Does he have his, uh, his hard-hitting attack available? Yes, he does. Holy Sword comes in. Boom. There we go. There we go. So you can see, making quick work... I'm just going to put it on auto here. But making quick work of the final Magma Dragon. 
Uh, this is... I'm not sure if this is my main team, but it's probably close to. Probably close to, and it's certainly effective, right? It gets the job done. Two-turn provoke. I don't need to tell you guys how effective that is against the Magma Dragon. One thing I would say, though, is it's a little redundant to have Martyr and her on the same team. We want to make sure that Molly's being attacked every time, so we don't want Martyr coming in there and replacing Molly Tank Arts provokes. So I'd probably take Martyr out of the team and probably put a champion like, I don't know, Valkyrie, if I was lucky enough to have her, uh, or Skull Crusher in the team, which I am lucky enough to have her, but I think that I'd probably just go uh, with one of those options, right? Let me go ahead and go one more Doom Tower boss. You know what? Let's, let me let me just switch it up a little bit. Let me switch it up. Let me put her with not super OP champions on the same team and see what she can do in terms of controlling the waves on a more difficult Doom Tower floor. How about that? Give her a little bit of a different use case. As if, like, if you don't have a team with the Kaimars and Seers or Renegades or whatever, uh, let's talk about, you know, practically speaking, she could serve a lot of utility just in those difficult dungeon uh, floor levels, right? Uh, so here we go. Has it, have I made it obvious that I'm a massive fan of Molly Tankard yet, guys? A lot of you tell me that 94 is where you run into issues. Floor 94 of Doom Tower. For whatever reason, well, the reason is, is Venus and Cupidus are so annoying, and even having Provoke on Cupidus isn't super helpful because he still has a strong AoE attack on his A1. For that reason, here's a control team that you guys can run a team very similar to this. We have Molly there for a two-turn lockdown Provoke, and the uh, double Reviver on the team with Sil of the Drakes. We have Elhane on the team in a stun set, Skull Crown on the team in a stun set, and Mithrala Lifebane just for some support and petrification with the Hex. Uh, so a lot of control here and that's how we can get through a dungeon like this i'm not going to keep you through the entire waves here just going to clear the first wave and come back at you guys after we successfully accomplish this doom tower floor uh because it's probably going to take me about you know five ten minutes so who, who knows right check it out every time she's hit you're going to see the turn meter boost you guys just saw it turn meter boost on all the other champions that's a 15 percent turn meter boost i know you guys get that already but that is just such an incredible ability, guys. Meanwhile, we're just going to keep CCing the enemy team. We're going to lose some people. Who cares? She'll pick him right back up. Skull Crown, you're right back in the fight. If we lose somebody else, it doesn't matter. So the Drakes will pick him up. They'll be right back in the fight. We're landing those stuns. We have petrification. We got more provokes on everybody. This is a beautiful strategy to employ. Again, if you don't have those super OP seer teams, essentially, right? I mean, that's how most people who have seer probably clear these Doom Tower waves. What about you? What is your go-to strategy for Doom Tower waves on the, the more difficult dungeons? No matter what it is, floor 94 or any other floor out there, Go with this sort of a strategy if you're running into that roadblock that I can't progress anymore. Go with stun sets with Fearsome Presence as a tier 6 option on a champion like Elhane. She's going to be very, very effective. And you can see it's taking a while, sure. But, everybody's staying alive on our squad. We're getting the job done. Eventually, they'll all be dead. We can move on to the next round, right? And we're doing a good job keeping everybody locked down and keeping our team going again with that passive ability. So, guys, I'm going to come back at you at the end of this battle. Hopefully, we win. I'm, I, I have a lot of confidence here. I think this team will be A-OK. -okay. Uh, but let's go ahead and wait and find out here. There he goes, Elhane taking him down. And you can see, man, just endless endless just onslaught of control <laughs> petrification again uh i'll be right back at the end of this battle guys and we'll see how the squad does all right guys so it took us 135 turns in seven minutes but we still got the job done and we did it by locking down and controlling the enemy team and that is a perfect place to end this video because that's exactly what molly tankard excels at if you're looking for a lockdown control champion look no further Thank you guys for watching until the end of the video. I appreciate you, and as always, take care, guys.